This video is going to be about the difference between static and kinetic friction. So friction is a force that acts against an object's motion. It's created by the object interacting with the surface it is on, and the force of friction always acts parallel to the surface and against the motion of the object. So whether that object is standing still and the friction is preventing it from moving forward, or if it's moving, that friction is still pushing against its motion or potential motion. Friction depends on the normal force acting on the object from the surface and the material the surface and object are made of. We're going to talk about that in more detail today. We haven't so far. In this video, I'm going to give you an equation that relates these things. So the bigger the normal force on the object, the bigger the force of friction can be. So that basically means that the more force the surface has to push up on the object with, the more friction it's going to experience as a result. So this introduces a new idea called the coefficient of friction. Coefficient of friction is the ratio of the force of friction to the normal force. Um, the coefficient of friction depends on the materials the surface and object are made of. Bigger coefficient of friction means a bigger force of friction between that object and the surface. The symbol for the coefficient of friction is mu. That's a Greek letter. It basically looks like a U with a long tail on the left, and it's pronounced mu. And it doesn't have any units associated with it because it's a coefficient. Another way you can understand that is that it's equal to a force divided by the force, so the Newton's unit would cancel out and leave you with nothing. If I rearrange this equation, it comes out to be this, and we're going to talk about it in this form a little bit more. Coefficient times the normal force is going to be equal to a force of friction. So the idea here is that because the normal force between an object and a surface doesn't necessarily have to change, um, if the coefficient is very small, that means that the force of friction is going to be very small. So something like a person standing on snow or ice, that situation has a very low coefficient of friction. So the frictional force is very small, so any downward force is going to have a pretty easy time accelerating that person in the downward direction. If we make the coefficient of friction very large, the force of friction is going to be very large. And so if you're just standing on the road, the force of friction is enough to hold you back from accelerating forward in a downward direction. Like if this person's standing on a hill, we can imagine that that force of friction is enough to keep them from starting to slide down the hill, because here the coefficient is very large. So now I'm going to talk about the two types of friction. The first type of friction is called static friction. This is the force of friction that prevents an object from moving. It perfectly balances other forces parallel to the surface to the, of the object, as long as those forces are below a certain maximum. To find the maximum static friction from a surface, you're going to multiply the coefficient of static friction on the surface by the normal force on the object. So let's do a calculation with this box here. I can see that the downward force of gravity would be 1960 newtons, so that means the normal force is also that. And I'm going to pretend that the coefficient of static friction between the box and the concrete is 0.62. So I'm going to write this equation. So what this is telling me is that the force of static friction is always going to be less than or equal to 0.62 times 1960, which is equal to 1215.2 newtons. So what this is telling me is that this is the maximum amount that the static friction can push back on the box before the box begins to move. So if you only push with 200 newtons, it's very easy for the static friction to push with 200 newtons back and prevent the box from moving because that's below the 1215 mark. That's below the largest possible static friction. If you push with more force, the friction is still able to perfectly balance you out as long as it's below that maximum. Once you push with anything greater than the maximum force of static friction, the force of static friction in return is only able to be that smaller number. And because the number pushing to the right is bigger than the number pushing to the left, the object is going to begin to accelerate in that direction. And once it starts to accelerate, static friction no longer applies because we are now moving. And now a different type of friction is going to take over. The second type of friction is called kinetic friction. This is the force on a moving object. It always points opposite the object's velocity, and it does not depend on any other force on the object besides the normal force. So just like the static friction, there's a similar equation for the kinetic friction. Force of kinetic friction is equal to the coefficient of kinetic friction times the normal force. Okay, let's do an example here. Um, here for this box, I'm going to pretend that the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0.5. So for this box, because the normal is 1960, the force of kinetic friction is 0.5 times 1000. 960 newtons, which is equal to 980 newtons. So if you push along with 980 newtons and it pushes back, there's not going to be any acceleration on the object. It's just going to go at a constant rate because all the forces are balanced out. If you push with a greater force than the force of kinetic friction, the force of kinetic friction doesn't really care. It's not going to adjust itself at all. It's just always equal to that one number. So here the acceleration would exist. Um, the object would get faster and faster and faster because there's an unbalanced force there. 
And if the force from your push is less than the force of kinetic friction, that means that over time the object is actually going to slow to a stop because the force of friction is pushing it back in that other direction, so the acceleration would be negative. Um, kind of a random fact, um, the relationship between the static and kinetic friction, the coefficient of static friction is always greater than the coefficient of kinetic friction for any surface. So just to summarize how static and kinetic friction work, to start an object moving, a force greater than the static friction needs to be applied. To keep the object moving, a force greater than or equal to the kinetic needs to be applied. The coefficient of static friction is always greater than the coefficient of kinetic friction. So watching the animation here, we can imagine we're trying to make this box move, and we start to push on it, and as we push on it, there's a force of static friction that's always pushing straight back canceling out that force. But there's a maximum amount of static friction that can push back, and if we equal that or go any farther, the object will begin to move, and it's replaced with the force of kinetic friction, which is a little bit smaller than the force of static friction. This is a conclusion. This is all you need to know about the two concepts. You can copy this down if you would like. Otherwise, you can start doing the problems.